great. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, good morning, and um, thank you very much, everyone, for coming along uh, today. Uh, let me just... So, good morning, and thanks, everyone, for coming along today. Uh, it's great to see you all. Uh, today, we're launching the third of the Green Party initiative. Um, the, first, uh, the first one was about um, uh, getting kids out of poverty. Uh, the next one was about cleaning up rivers, and today, we're talking about green jobs. Um, and green economic transformation. Um, I'd like to acknowledge, um, I think, business, someone from Business New Zealand here and the Finti U. Uh, thank you very much for coming along. Um, as well, I think we have some people here from the Fabian Society and Forest and Bird, uh, so it's great to see you all. And I think Nick's here from the Heavy Engineering Research Association. Too. Right. So um, thanks everyone for coming along. Um, the, the, what we're talking about today is green economic opportunity. Uh, so, we are going through this um, enormous transition uh, in terms of the global economy as we come to terms with the sustainability issues. And that creates real challenges uh, for our economy, but it also creates real opportunities. And, and this is about New Zealand engaging in those real opportunities. And so the plan that I'm about to release, um, as a, I'll talk through a PowerPoint very shortly, is about trying to find a way for us to engage with those opportunities. But before I do that, I'd just like to introduce Nick Garrison, um, Nick's come along today, just, uh, a Nick's a green entrepreneur, um, one of the directors and founders of Aquaflow um, and various other green startup companies. Um, in, a, in some ways, Nick um, epitomises the, the green economic opportunity, someone who's <coughs> chosen to live in New Zealand, uh, such in, in Marlborough Sound, the beautiful Marlborough Sound, but could live anywhere on the planet. Um, and, and I just asked Nick to say a few words about what he's up to and what he sees as the green economic opportunities, and then I'll present the, 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 the presentation. So I have to next Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, um, it's, it's great to be here because um, I guess it's one of those those things occasionally in life you, you get a chance to actually let your conscience sort of like pass through, and that's sort of where I'm coming from. Um, I think you know the, the key point for New Zealand is that we need to realise that the green economy is actually mainstream. Um, and increasingly, you know, global engagement for all countries, let alone little countries on the edge of the world, is actually going to be absolutely pre predicated around our green credentials. So, um, if you are a pragmatic, you know, um, capitalist, you know, business person, <laughs> wanting to sort of like um, come up with something from New Zealand, framing your your innovation or your entrepreneurial idea within that framework is actually fundamental, I think, to being successful globally. So. I guess, you know, in our particular story, um, we were lucky enough to have a group of people that um, were brave enough to look at a blank piece of paper about six years ago, and we sort of identified, you know, what were some of the big structural issues that we sort of saw the world moving into. And um, obviously, you know, constraints around fossil resources and, and the sort of the various techniques and methodologies used by governments around the world to um, try and uh, gain an interest in, in those resources was obviously a, a key area. But even pragmatically looking back at New Zealand, it's like, well, how you know, how how can New Zealand get its product to market if um, if the cost of crude oil is 250 to 500 you know dollars US barrel, um, you know, and these things are actually happening very very fast. I think the key indicator um, for us recently, and it's like one of those amazing um, data points, which I don't think has actually been adequately co covered in New Zealand, is the International Energy Agency actually. Um, admitting that the world passed into peak oil in 2006. So we're now on the downside of an exponential curve. And you know what? Um, we were on a, a call recently with the World Economic Forum, Future of Aviation. The World Bank analyst said that it's highly likely that a barrel of crude oil is going to be 250 US dollars by 2020, which is actually, unfortunately, um, not that many years away. So we just started doing stuff, really. Um, scientists hate it when I say this, but we started blowing stuff up, basically. And our really real thinking was how do we go back to nature and actually try and speed nature up? Um, so if we think about crude oil, crude oil actually come, came from algae that was in the, in the oceans hundreds of millions of years ago. Um, you know, the deserts that we, we're currently mining now were originally oceans, so hence crude oil in, in the Middle East, etc. So um, we thought, okay, well, what can we do? Where are there algae? The Mayor of Marlborough, the Marlborough District Council, were really great. It said, here's some space, go and, go and start doing some stuff out there. And within a relatively short period of time, and this was actually December 2008, um, with our partner Honeywell in Chicago, 
we've produced the world's first fully compliant Jet A1 aviation fuel out of wild algae from the Blenheim sewage pond. Interestingly to me, this is still the only fully compliant Jet A1 sample from wild algae in the world. So my question is, well, how smart is the world? Um, <laughs> on, the, on the other side of the fossil equation, um, coal, and obviously coal is becoming an increasing issue for New Zealand. How can we speed up the process of, of creating coal? Again, it's like a, you know, tens of millions of years sort of process, and luckily or not, we have a resource in that area, but the issues are, is it smart to use this resource um, unless it's at the high, high quality end of it? So we figured, well, let's have a go at this. Um, in that particular case, the biomass feedstock that we took into it was actually um, pine sawdust waste from um, the forestry industry, of which, depending on who you talk to, you know, we have somewhere between two to four million tonnes per annum dumped on our landscape in, in New Zealand. So from that, we produced um, this here, which is actually um, an equivalent to coking coal, which actually is a key part of um, steel making. So this here really can potentially herald in this whole new, um, I guess, product sector of, of green steel. And already as a small um, company, we are attracting significant interest from really large steel companies from around the world on that. Um, not to, you know, not to sort of like defer from blowing more stuff up, we blew it up again and um, came up with, with this here, which is activated carbon. Um, activated carbon is basically used for filtration, water emissions controls. It's a, a market which is a multi-billion dollar global market that's compounding at uh, about 5% growth per annum. Um, again, out of, out of sawdust, we produce a product here which sells for 2,500 US dollars a tonne. So, speeding nature up, um, you know, we, we forget the great, great Tim Flannery um, uh, statistical data point is that, you know, every year human society, of which we're part, um, uses more than 400 years of stored energy. So we're actually really lucky that the Earth is as old as it, as it is. So by us actually endeavouring to speed things up, hopefully that differential, if we get 1%, 2%, 5% or whatever, wherever it may end up, actually will have an order of magnitude improvement on, the, on that overall ratio. So New Zealand has a key role to play in all this. Um, it's interestingly, you know, that the visitors that we've had to these companies, um, probably 20% of them have been Kiwi, 80% of them have been global. Of that 80%, um, probably, um, I would say 50% of them have been um, in the top uh, 250 largest companies in the world, walking around the Blenheim Surge Pond, which I think is quite hilarious. You know? so, <laughs> so my point is, if you do cool stuff, if you have big ideas, the world is actually hungry and it's watching. So, you know, um, I think back to the work that New Zealand did around the knowledge wave period. You know, what the green economy offers us is actually a common sense economy, which is actually the transformational opportunity that New Zealand has been wishing for. So our key issue now is that we've been a bit slow to get going onto it. So, you know, I think that the, the announcements that are coming out today and this whole push forward into this area has to be seen as a transformational economic, um, you know, opportunity for the country which is broad and deep in just what it can do. You know, from biologists and engineers to labourers to forestry workers, you know, it actually is going to, you know, impact the entire New Zealand um, economy. And that's what, you know, we're really doing. We're just trying to do our bit to actually make it happen as fast as we possibly can.